It's outrageous. Uh, look, it, the, the issue is this individual, first of all, used a handgun, and Biden's call for a policy change had nothing to do with that. Uh, it, it was all about sort of fear-mongering and trying to capitalize on this tragic uh, situation, uh, as, as he and his party so often do. But the bottom line is that this is about finding the individual who perpetrated this horrific act and holding them to account. And by the way, uh, a, a solution, uh, perhaps a policy solution, is allowing Americans to defend themselves. It's allowing police officers to defend themselves when they are under attack. Uh, it's not about you know, going after law-abiding citizens. So, I mean, what a nonsensical reaction, I, I think, is, is all I would say about that. Yeah, and criminals, as we all know, never follow gun laws anyway, so it really doesn't matter. It just hurts law-abiding citizens. Now, I want to shift gears here. Uh, some people and many in the media are losing their minds over the indoor Trump rally that took place in Henderson, Nevada. So uh, they're upset because this was indoors, obviously, and there were thousands of people there. The video I saw, most a lot of people were wearing masks. Um, but what do you make of that? And are, is the White House concerned about the optics? So I, I would say, first of all, the you know, my understanding is the event organizers gave out masks. They had hand sanitizer, uh, you know, plenty of hand sanitizer. Uh, they're encouraging people to make their own safe uh, choices. But the criticism coming from the governor of Nevada and, and others is, is rich because that very governor had put out guidance on how to protest. He seems fine with that. Uh, the casinos and the Vegas Strip were lined uh, with people. He had no problem with that. So I, I think the American people are tired of the hypocrisy, first of all. And secondly, uh, we need to give them more credit to, to make smart decisions, to to protect the vulnerable, to wear masks and use hand sanitizer and practice hygiene and things like that. And we can safely reopen our economy using common sense. And we can get people back to church and back to school and back to running their businesses. We just have to be safe about it, use common sense. But this hypocrisy that you can go out and protest, you can go out and riot, you can burn down buildings, uh, you can go to casinos, but you can't go hear from the president or you can't go to church or you can't go to school. I mean, it's, it's a total disconnect and the American people see it, they see through it, the, the, uh, the, this, this sort of hypocrisy. Um, and the president obviously uh, is going to allow the American people to make their own decisions, uh, just encouraging safety and common sense. Yeah. Uh, I'm not really familiar with this medical expert, Jonathan Reiner. This was from a segment on CNN. He called the indoor rally negligent homicide. But I also never heard this guy speak out against the riots and the protests, the indoor gambling, or anything else that you just mentioned. Yeah, I mean, w where was he when protesters were lighting the historic St. John's Church on fire? Where was he uh, in Kenosha where there were residents pleading for help? Because protesters, uh, you know, were, were disrupting their community. They were they were causing all sorts of damage. They were ruining businesses. I mean, where where was this person when all sorts of of uh, quote unquote peaceful protests were actually having deleterious effects on people's lives right before our very eyes? Uh, so this this kind of uh, vitriol uh, is really it's it's unfair. It's unjustified. It's 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 a ridiculous. Thing to uh, to say about the president of the United States and uh, this person, you know, given that he's chosen this to speak out uh, and not these other events, Stephanie, that, that you're talking about, I think really damages his credibility. I'm not familiar with this individual either, but that's a really reckless thing to say about the president. Yeah, uh, Brian, maybe you could shed some light on this. Uh, according to Politico, Trump officials interfered with CDC reports on COVID-19. Uh, what is the White House reaction to this? Is there any truth to that? I mean, I I don't think we'll we'll comment on, on on any particular you know operations at at HHS. I will say that Secretary Azar has come out very clearly and said that the administration's health professionals are given direct access to President Trump on a regular basis. Uh, his coronavirus task force, led by the vice president, has uh, the administration's public health professionals, including by the way the director of the CDC, Dr. Redfield, uh, who has a very prominent role. And anytime the CDC or the other public health experts have information to share or they have uh, you know, guidance or recommendations to share, their voices are 
very well represented. The president listens to them, the vice president listens to them, and the task force uses the information that they provide to make really critical public health policy decisions. And that's not going to stop. Uh, this this uh, whole of government approach is going to continue to rely on guidance from public health experts uh, it, as it has for the, the months leading up to now, and, and the president will continue to rely on his public health experts in the months to come. Well, Brian, we're going to have to leave it here. Thanks for joining us. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One American News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One American News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.